Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Maybe it's not yet afternoon for some. Um, I am Graffiela Bertocchi. I teach at the University of Modena and I have also a position at EIF in Italy, both in Italy. And uh, my job is today to present actually the speaker. And the speaker is today Irina Stewen. For those that don't know her already, I will give a, a brief uh, presentation of, of Irina and then uh, uh, let her present her paper. So Irina completed her undergraduate education in Ukraine, where she is from. She received a PhD in economics from the University of Zurich, and she is currently an assistant professor of economics at the University of Mainz. Uh, her main research agenda is focused on macro, international macro, and finance and banking. And today, indeed, she's going to present a paper on these uh, topics. Um, as you know, um, there will be a presentation of approximately 40 minutes. It may be longer if there are many questions. In fact, uh, Irina told me that uh, she's welcoming questions even during the presentation. So, and the best way, I think, is that if uh, anybody that wants to ask a question during the presentation can um, just speak up, you know, unmute herself or yourself and just speak up. So this is the best way to reach Irina that is not going to be able to see the chat um, promptly. So please, if you have a question, please uh, interrupt Irina. That's what she's asking and ask questions. Of course, if there will be questions at the end, uh, those can be also asked. Uh, and uh, there is also a chat uh, in case you want to write up something. We will take a look at the chat, uh, I would say, at the end. So during the presentation, we will take uh, you know, live questions, if that's OK. OK, so um, I think we are ready to let Irina present her paper. Thank you, Irina. Thank you very much. Thank you for a nice uh, introduction. And thank you for having me here today and for giving me the opportunity to present our paper uh, joined with Matthias Hoffmann and Michael Stiefel, both from the University of Zurich. At this point, I would also like to pay tribute to my hosting uh, institution at the moment for this semester. I am visiting University of Zurich, so uh, just to mention it here. So I'm going to present paper growing like Germany, local public debt, local banks and low private investment. Our paper has been motivated by the fact by that Germany has been running increasing uh, current account surpluses uh, in the recent years and um, policymakers, institutions and media typically blame um, high current uh, fiscal uh, surplus of uh, Germany as a driving force of this current account surplus. And this paper, we focus on private investment and ask ourselves, could it be the case that uh, private investment in Germany is lower than it should be? Um, this paper is inspired by the literature on uh, emerging, uh, emerging markets and especially China that identifies domestic financial frictions as a driver of low private investment and high current account surpluses. Specifically, this, in this literature preferential lending of local banks to local governments could lead to local crowding out. So bearing this in mind, we ask ourselves next, could it be the structure of the financial system itself in Germany that is to blame for uh, low investment? Why do we think it could be the case in Germany? Here are the four peculiarities of um, German economy that are at place and that uh, would play an important role uh, in our story. So the first one is that um, small and medium-sized enterprises constitute uh, the backbone of Germany's economy on the one hand, and on the other hand, they are also heavily dependent on local banks for credit. The second feature is that um, is the role of German local public banks in the financing um, municipalities. Germany's local public banks, especially savings banks, have a statutory mandate for municipal lending and they are also under the direct political control for local municipalities. Um, 
local cooperative banks do not face these constraints and we are going to use them as a control group in our analysis. So these two features are the long-standing features of Germany, of German economy. The next two that are um, going to present are the newly uh, reason um, the features that arose in the last decade and that um, play in the, the, as a driving force in our mechanism. The first one is a decline in the municipal spread, that is a spread of pub, public sector lending over the bank's refinancing rates. And the second one is a um, fiscal austerity and well-known German debt break that um, postulates that state and federal level governments have shifted a lot of expensive tasks to the municipalities. So what is our story about? As I just said, it is a decline in municipal lending rates and uh, public debt that um, bring our bring the ball to rolling. Um, declining municipal spreads um, constitute a shadow cost on the savings banks that have to um, lend to the municipalities. And um, that is why um, this um, shadow cost or opportunity cost that arise for savings bank are there for the savings bank, but not for cooperative banks. On the other hand, um, introduction of uh, debt break um, have shifted a lot of expensive uh, and important tasks from state and federal level government to the municipalities. Uh, municipalities have, have tried to dampen the effect on their, their um, budgets coming from this uh, shift from state and federal government by borrowing more from uh, local public banks or savings banks. And this increases the shadow cost on um, savings bank. This is also uh, makes the savings bank to try to make up for this um, foregone uh, lending that could have been done to more attractive customers. To make up for this um, costs, savings banks um, increase lending rates to the most captive customers and this most captive and least elastic customers are small and medium sized uh, enterprises that are tied to the local banks by long standing uh, relationship lending. We show empirically that um, um, small and medium sized enterprises dependent on local public banks that lend a lot to the government, pay higher interest rates and have lower investment. For the average firm investment um, is about 5% lower due to the crowding out. And uh, we show that the aggregate investment was around 30 to 40 billion euro per year uh, lower due to this effect. This constitutes about one percent of GDP. They show also that about 75 percent of this effect is explained by the fiscal pressure imposed on municipalities by the debt break. So what is the contribution of our paper and uh, which uh, policy implication could be drawn from it? Uh, we are the first paper to document local crowding out for a developed economy. We also show that crowding out of private investment can happen in a low interest rate environment. And in fact, the low interest rate environment is a key for our mechanism, especially um, when the interest rate uh, is low, even small credit spreads uh, would have disproportionate effect on internal rate of uh, returns for firms investment. And this is especially true um, due to the Tobin's uh, argument in the environment when low interest rates um, remains low for a long time. So we show in our paper also that it matters a lot how or where the government debt is financed. And we argue that financing 
local debt in locally segmented credit markets um, is not a good idea. It would be much better for the economy to finance local uh, debt internationally or at least nationally or at the, uh, on the bond markets. We show also that uh, fiscal austerity at the state and federal level may have lead to perverse effects, the crowding out of private investment. So there is not only direct effect of um, lower government investment, but also indirect effect through the crowding out that also um, leads to declining private investment. So um, we are um, integrating and building on the um, large literature due to the time scarcity. I would uh, skip it just to mention that we're also building on a crowding uh, out, local crowding out, nascent uh, cr local crowding out literature um, um, that is presented by Huang et al. at the Journal of Finance uh, as a main difference to them is that we really do have bank data and we could really document uh, the mechanism, how it works through the balance sheet of banks. So what is German uh, system about um, Germany banking system? We have savings bank, cooperative banks in Germany and commercial banks. Savings and cooperative banks both uh, operate on regional principle, but the main difference between savings and cooperative banks is that savings banks do have this mandate to finance municipalities and cooperative banks do not have this mandate and this uh, would make the make difference here and this is what we are going to use for our identification. This picture shows you the role of local banks in Germany economy and it shows that uh, local banks are really very dominant, uh, play a dominant role in uh, financing firms and the, the, big, the really dark color of the map uh, suggests that uh, local banks really dominate firm relationship in Germany. The next uh, argument that we would like to make, it's not only the dominant role of the savings banks uh, for financing firms, but also the inability of firms to switch to other firms. So here is a fraction of firms that uh, switch uh, within a year. And as you see, it is about 1% of firms that are linked to the savings bank that would switch in the following year as a bank. So in the first column, you see the uh, fraction of firms that increase the number of banks in the following year. So it uh, rises from 1% uh, to about 3% uh, in the last year, but the last year, the year 2015 is really a little bit the outlier. So it lies within 1%. And the second column, column shows you the fraction of firms that uh, switch really from savings bank to the cooperative banks. And what we see this number is also about 1%, but a little bit lower that in the first column, the difference between the first and the second column is really the firms that are switching not from, uh, that are switching not to the Volksbank, but to other commercial banks. So you see that the most, if they are switching at all, they're switching to the uh, cooperative banks and the rest is switching to uh, commercial banks, but overall the uh, number of banks switching within a year is really very, very low. So here Can is you uh, a question, Irina. This is yeah, a, please. Um, are these local banks truly independent or are they part of conglomerates uh, uh, acting in a more uh, less local way? Are they really independent and local? Um, they all belong to this corporation or association of savings bank, but they are really operate independently independent. and, uh, right, on their own uh, in the region. The 
peculiarity of this uh, savings bank is that they are providing loans or operating re really at the regional principle, regional principle. It means that they provide loans only to the customers that really located in the same region. But uh, overall, they are independent on their decisions, yes. Okay, thank you. Actually, I see that there are a few questions in the chat. In case you want to take them now, uh, I can read them for you. Yeah, or please. Yes, okay. First was Monica Merz. She's asking, is your story one of a credit crunch in Germ Germany? No. Shall I, shall I read the next as well? Or, or you, you may want to answer this one. Uh, no, it's not about credit crunch. Uh, Viraza argues that uh, banks, uh, since they are providing more credit to the municipalities, they ha have to raise the interest rate for the firms because uh, providing loans to the municipalities is not attractive. And in order to break even, they need to increase interest rate for the small firms or for firms. Okay, there is another question by Elaine Ray. What happens when a municipality cannot reimburse any bailout by the state? Yes, um, it is actually that uh, Germany's municipalities cannot um, say that they are default. Um, at the end, the state have to spring in and um, really pay the debt of the municipalities. But it has never happened until now. So at the end, uh, municipalities anticipate that they would be uh, built in, but um, they, at some point in time, they do not uh, really scratch this line where they really say that they are default. Okay, one last question by Jean Comot. Is there any reason for the, slow, for the low switching rate? And what would be the cost, uh, I believe, for a firm to change bank? That's the, the question, right, Jean? Yeah, um, the problem is that um, the firms are tied to the banks by the collateral. And as I heard from the people who own firms, it's really very difficult to withdraw the collateral and go to another bank. And this is this collateral and uh, difficulty to take the collateral out of the one bank and bring it to another makes it difficult to switch the bank. And uh, another reason I think is also that it is very often that um, banks, savings bank and cooperative banks are in the same region. And if the firm is really have relationship with one of them, another bank would ask them, why don't you go to your bank? Why are you coming to us? Is there a reason behind it? And uh, small firms are really very opaque and it has really high costs to informational cost to really find out what is the reason why the firm is coming to, uh, to one of the banks and not going to their house bank. I hope it answers the question. So it raises the opaqueness of small firms and uh, the difficulty and high cost to withdraw collateral and bring it to another firm. Yeah, Let, there is one more question by Monica. Not all firms are net borrowers. No. Some must be net lenders. Can they not switch? Um, it could be the case. And uh, I would show you uh, if I present my empirical result that um, the probabilities to switch uh, decreases with the uh, size of the firm. So if the um, um, the elasticity of substitution of bank finance is higher that we measure by um, 
size of the firm or by employment of the firm or by the age of the firm or also by the number of bank relationship, uh, the probability to switch is increasing. And this is uh, how we, uh, the whole mechanism is working. So the firms that are larger and have higher uh, elasticity to switch the bank, um, then they switch the bank. But normally, the small firms have only one bank relationship in our sample. And this is uh, driving the results. But of course, uh, the firms that are larger in all terms, uh, given by the age or number of banks or by the size, then they have the possibility to switch easier. And they will also show that in the regions where the proportion of savings banks is, is lower in all in the share of banks in the region, the probability to switch is increasing. So if there are more banks in the region, then the probability is increasing. And what we argue the problem is that in very in, in many rural areas in Germany, there are only savings bank and cooperative banks, but there is no commercial bank at all. So the firms have no the possibility to switch if they would like to have some additional relationship with other bank, they need to uh, drive to the next uh, town or to the next city in order to uh, make this relationship. And this is costly as well. Okay, one more question by Svetelina Nenova. German municipality, municipality also issue bonds. Have you compared the interest rates on the bonds versus lending rates? I guess there are only very little municipalities that issue bonds. Um, we haven't controlled for this, but um, this would be one of the robustness checks that we could do if we uh, extract uh, the municipalities that issue bonds, but there are really very little of them that issue bonds, actually. And this is what we argue, if all municipalities had the possibility to issue bonds and to finance their local debt nationally, it would be, uh, it would uh, lead to less crowding out, to less local crowding out. Okay, I think you can continue. Okay, uh, so this picture shows you that uh, the spread over the last 10 years is really close to zero and uh, this is what drives our results. Here is our, our results in the nutshell. They show that higher municipal lending leads to higher firm lending rate. So you see the involvement of the relationship between public loans as a share of total loans um, and firm lending rate over the years. So we have on the x-axis um, the public lending share and on the y-axis firm lending rate. And we see blue and red dots. Red dots um, shows savings bank and blue dots shows a cooperative banks. So we see positive relationships between public lending rates of the bank and firm lending rates. So the banks that lend more to the municipalities charge higher interest rate um, on firms. Now, and this relationship is only given for savings banks, but not for cooperative banks. So it's the same region, cooperative banks do not, even if the region uh, have higher uh, necessity for the public debt, for, uh, Volksbanks or cooperative banks do not lend more to the municipalities. And there is no relationship between firm lending rates and the public lending share for cooperative banks. Now, if we see the if development of this uh, relationship over time, we see that um, it becomes stronger and firms, or not firms, banks charge even higher interest rates. And not all banks, but only savings bank charge even higher interest rate on their firms given the public uh, lending shares. So we argue that 
uh, this the driving forces is declining municipal spread and pub debt break introduced in 2010 really drives our results and makes this relationship between public lending shares and firm lending rate stronger. So uh, what is our data? We merge two data, one coming from Daphne that uh, gives us um, firm level data. There is a data on income statements and balance sheet for about 1.4 million German firms. And we have also bank relationship uh, of these firms for each of the years and also the change in relationship uh, for each of the firm for this six year. We merge it with the bank level data that uh, has the data on bank balance sheet net interest margin loans as a share of balance sheet as loans to the public sector. Um, what we do not have, we do not have credit register data. We do not have this data, how much each bank uh, lends to each firm, but uh, I would show you how we circumvent this um, fact and what are we using in our empirical analysis. So, uh, to guide our empirical analysis, we propose a stylized theoretical model uh, in the spirit of Brunemeyer and Kobe. Uh, we use this, uh, we extend this model and uh, show that using this, we could differentiate between, um, between uh, firms that are really restricted and that not restricted. So uh, we could uh, show that the firm lending rate can be written as a firm lending rate uh, that is equal to the unconstrained firm lending rate plus some break even spread. And this break even spread is actually the Lagrange multiplier on the statutory public lending requirements. And it depends on uh, these three uh, parts here or members here is that I'm going to tell you what are they. So lambda is a break, uh, is uh, the lending, public lending share. And we argue that for constrained banks where lambda is equal to lambda bar, the break even spread is increasing in lambda. We also show that, uh, or it is uh, seen from this model that exogenous increase in lambda bar Make it, makes it more likely that statutory public lending requirements becomes binding for previously unconstrained banks. As the interest rate on public debt declines or municipal spread declines, this is the difference between IP and ID, uh, the bank optimally wants to hold a smaller fraction of its balance sheet on municipal loans and would increase theta. And banks with a least, less elastic supply of funds will charge, this is measured by one of uh, epsilon D, will charge a high break even spread set respirator. So we use, use the insights from the model and um, try to uh, differentiate empirically between constrained and not constrained banks. So what we are doing, we are estimating a bank level regression where we have on the left hand side the average interest rate that bank charges the firm on average for each bank. And then we run a regression on time fixed effect, region fixed effect, bank controls, and um, use the information uh, that we have received from our model that uh, for banks that are constrained, this interest rate should depend on the bank uh, public lending share and on the interaction between public lending share and municipal spread. Uh, note that this capital lambda is equal to the one over one minus small lambda that we have seen in the model. So we really incorporate uh, the information that we had in the model into our empirical model. And we run the regression of this type where we argue that the interest rate of unconstrained bank would given by the time region and uh, bank control effects. And the rest uh, would really identify our constrained banks. 
And what we see if you run this regression for savings bank and cooperative banks that um, only for cooperative, uh, only for savings banks, um, the, the interest rate of savings banks that they charge uh, private firms uh, depends on public lending share and on the interaction between public lending share and municipal spread. And uh, this public lending share and municipal spread do not play any role for the interest rate for cooperative banks. So using this information, we could construct a fitted value of theta for each of the banks, and then we use the, this to construct the firm level exposure to the local banks. So in the first step, we construct the break even spread for each of the bank. And if bank is constrained, then this theta is larger than zero. And if it's not constrained, then this theta is equal to zero. Given the thetas um, for each of the bank, we now look at the firm's bank relationship and construct the exposure to spreads charged by the local public banks. And this is the weighted sum of all the bank relationships that the firm has, that is the weight is given by the distance to the uh, bank. So in this way, we construct our exposure to the local public banks, and then we uh, pursue our hypothesis and estimate the reduced form regression at the firm level, where we have on the left-hand side investment, and on the right-hand side, the exposure to the local public banks. We argue that this exposure to the local public banks goes not only directly, but it depends on also on this um, ETA, that is the firm's ability to substitute bank finance. And we measure this ETA, as I already said, answering the question of uh, to Monica Merz, that this ETA um, is measured by the firm size, age, employment, and number of banks that the firms have. So we argue that the larger the firm is, the less it depends on the exposure to the um, local public banks. So we argue that this alpha is going to be positive, um, no, is going to be negative, so that the firms that are more exposed to the local public banks invest less, and this uh, relationship is dampened by the size of the firm or by the ability of the firm to substitute bank finance. Um, please notice that this SPK is constructed using only bank level information and geographical information only. So we argue that it uh, should be plausibly exogenous in our setup. So here are the first results. Um, each column introduces more controls or more fixed effects. Uh, in the last column, we have the most demanding specification where we introduce firm size uh, and equity share as uh, firm controls and also have except of firm fixed effect also come county sector time fixed effect. So we really look at the difference between, um, between firms within some uh, one county uh, and one sector. So what we see that um, SPK decreases investment and this effect is dampened by the uh, ability of the firm to substitute against this bank finance. Um, what we're also doing, this is the results for ETA that is measured by the firm size, but we also could um, show that if we measure ETA by any other um, variable or by other variables that could be proxy for the firm's uh, ability to substitute against bank finance, uh, we have similar results. It doesn't matter if we measure it by employment, age, or number of banks, we would get the same result. Perhaps it's interesting to see the um, result, uh, for example, for the number of banks. And this is what perhaps really drives our result. The number of banks that switching from one bank to two banks really makes difference for the banks or for the firms. So if you have only one bank, then it would mean that uh, 
you really depend your investment ne negatively depends on your um, exposure to the local banks as soon as you have possibility or the size to have two bank relationship this um, ability so the dependence of investment on exposure to the local public banks um, is not so pronounced anymore um, what we also argue or what we also check for is that it could be the case that um, there is some compositional effects that some specific firms choose for some specific uh, banks and uh, to control for this we uh, construct a granular IV where we use uh, really the um, share of each sector in the bank's firm relationship and the number of firms connected to each bank to obtain a time varying sequence of sectoral proxy portfolio weights for each bank and uh, then take it as a loading of this file here and then we take this psi as really as an instrument that um, is not that is exogenous part of this break even spread and construct our granular instrumental variable and what we see that uh, the results are really very significant for both for investment bank liability growth and interest rates so um, just to give you the economic significance of this estimates, the standard deviation of SPK is about 80 basis points. So our coefficient of minus 0 0.8 implies um, 40, 64 basis points decline in the investment rate. So the investment rate as a fraction of fixed assets is about 15%. So a stand, one standard deviation increase in the exposure to the local public banks implies a four percent decline in investment so we have some robustness and some extensions we use a rich uh, fixed effects uh, sample for west germany we have uh, also placebo treatments uh, where we uh, created SPK from cooperative local banks but what i would like to show you is the likelihood to switch for the bank so uh, we have on the left hand side now the switch banks uh, dummy and uh, we show that um, the higher the exposure to the local public banks, uh, the higher is the uh, probability to switch the bank. And we show that this probability to switch the bank is higher in regions where the share of um, savings banks or local public banks in bank relationship is lower. So what means lower relationship um, or savings banks uh, share in the relationship? It means that there are more banks in the region. So in this region where we have more banks uh, to switch to, the probability to switch is about uh, two times higher in, in the region where the the savings bank constitute really a large share in bank relationships. In the last two minutes, I would like to show you what drives our results. We show that the uh, bank liabilities um, dec decrease with exposure to the local public banks and interest rates that, are pay that firms have to pay to the banks increase with exposure to the local public bank. We also show that our effects are driven by the regions where the segmentation is high. So what we see is that uh, both investment rate, bank liability and interest rate is really significant in regions with high segmentation rate or where we, as we measure it, the share of savings bank or local banks in all bank relationship is higher. And um, we also use the debt break uh, and consolidation needs uh, interacted with the municipality's fiscal situation at the beginning of the sample as an instrument for the share of local banks uh, public lending. So what we are doing, we use or construct uh, at first um, fiscal pressure at the state level because um, debt break was uh, introduced 
uh, in 2010, but states have the right to implement it on their own uh, way and their own, uh, yeah, sp um, speed. And that is why we construct this uh, fiscal consolidation or fiscal um, pressure at the state level as a difference between deficit and consolidation past, given this fiscal pressure at the state level, we then could construct a local, local fiscal pressure that is given um, by the interaction between this fiscal pressure and the initial level of um, public debt in this county. So given this local fiscal pressure, we instrument our public lending share at the bank level by this local fiscal pressure. And the uh, interaction between public lending share and municipal spread by the interaction between LFP, that is local fiscal pressure uh, times municipal spread. And uh, then we get the fitted values for theta. So we estimate this uh, regression once more and then have the fitted values for theta. And this is the effects for the uh, IV regression. But what is I would like to show you the firm level results that we have seen in the very beginning where lambda, this public lending share, is explained by the state level austerity. So what we are doing, we instrument public lending share lambda by uh, local fiscal pressure and then take the fitted value of this to um, construct our theta that is break even spread and given break even spread for each of the bank we construct firms exposure to the local public banks and then run our regressions baseline regression for investment bank liability and interest rate and what we see for investment that um, the numbers if you remember SPK, the coefficient of SPK was about 0 0.8 um, if you run it as a public lending shares. And here is a public lending share instrumented by the debt break or by local fiscal pressure. And we see that the difference is about three quarters. So we are able to explain by public, uh, by debt break about three quarters of the effects of crowding out at the local level. So let me conclude. Uh, we show that the local segmentation of Germany's credit market together with the political influence on local banks are the key factors behind low private investment in Germany. Um, our results suggest that fiscal consolidation imposes adjustment burden on local governments, which turn to local public banks for finance. This crowds out private investment in locally segmented credit markets and about three quarters of this crowding out could be driven by fiscal austerity. Our mechanism is strengthened in a low interest rate environment and we provide a new channel through which quantitative easing and monetary policy with low for long interest rate can reduce the lending to the private sector. We also show that it could be the new channels through which fiscal austerity can have contractionary effects. And these results could hold lessons for many other countries in which banks with an explicit mandate for public lending are a feature of the banking landscape and where credit markets are segmented along regional lines. What we argue, and this is the main takeaway from uh, our paper uh, as a policy introduction, that it could be not a good idea to finance local debt locally in a locally segmented banking markets. Thank you very much.